I was waiting for somebody to have a take like this because I've thought about having this take. Does Ohio State have the best like roster pound for pound, position by position? Do they have the most power? That's what Greg McElroy thinks. Uh, he and Matt Berry talked about a lot of different things in college football. It was a jam-packed January for the sport. When you talk about, I mean, obviously there was a national championship in January. There were playoff games at the beginning of January. And that wasn't even the biggest news headline. The biggest news headline is what's going on with all these coaches, what's going on with the transfer portal and these recruits, everyone going everywhere, what happens in the wake of the Saban retirement. And Ohio State gets a couple of really key players in the transfer portal this year that it seems to put them over the edge a little bit, right? At least the edge that they needed to get over, and that was beating Michigan in the Big Ten. They've been struggling to do that the last couple of years. And now uh, the Buckeyes, they do seem pretty stacked. When you think about them bringing in Will Howard, you think about them bringing in Quinshawn Judkins, when you already convinced Travion Henderson to come back. So they're going to have a two-headed monster at running back that are legitimate top two or three round NFL prospects in Travion Henderson and Quinshawn Judkins. These guys are guys that could play in the NFL, and that's what Ohio State has, has boosted this roster on. Uh, you think about... You know, getting the number one overall player, but is they are they better than Georgia? Right, I've ranted for the last minute to Albany, Ohio State. Do they have a pound for pound? You know, more powerful by position by position. If you just look at it, is Ohio State better than Georgia in terms of talent on paper? It's a good question, and I'm gonna I'm gonna try to answer that here. At least talk through it with you guys, Ryan Cully from Dog Post here, comparing Georgia and Ohio State's roster right now because at the moment it seems like. Those two have the most juice heading into 2024. It seems like, you know, the Big Ten felt kind of up in the air heading into this season, right? You think Ohio State, uh, you know, well, they, they just haven't been able to get over the hump the last couple of years. Michigan, eh, they might take a step back. You, you think about Oregon. Can Oregon win the Big Ten in its first season? I, I do think that Oregon has a chance. They have a, they have a chance to take a crack at that. But now Ohio State is, they've answered the bell. They've answered the bell. And with Georgia... Uh, you know, the, the SEC is always going to get really hard to go through. Uh, it's always going to be really hard to go through, especially now when you add a, a program into it like Texas that's on your eyes. You add another high-level program like Oklahoma in there, and now Georgia is going to have to start going through those two teams as well. It gets it gets more difficult for the Dogs, but they return Carson Beck. They hit some needs in the transfer portal. They return some senior defensive linemen. Uh, you can argue, you know, Georgia's weapons room is where it's not where it needs to be. And maybe that's where you compare it to Ohio State and say that it's just not quite as good. So let's look at it. Because what did Georgia lose in 2024? Or what is Georgia losing that's that's really, really important? Uh, you're losing three of your top receivers in Lab McConkey, Marcus Osmond Jack Saint, Brock Bowers, and you're losing a legendary player. And Brock Bowers. Now, Ohio State also loses Marvin Harrison Jr., and that's a big, big deal as well. They retain more, especially when you think about Emeka Buka returning, right? Another former five star, another guy that many people see as a potential future first round NFL draft pick. He would have had a chance to do that this past year, but he, he decides he's going to return, try to make his draft stock better, try to make Ohio State better. But pound for pound, the weapon room, yeah, obviously when Ohio State has a running back tandem of Travion Henderson and Quinshot Judkins, you lean towards that versus George's Travis Etienne, or Trevor Etienne and the other younger running backs that still need to develop, right? We don't know what they're going to be when they're given a ton of touches. What is Roderick Robinson? Is Brand, what does Branson Robinson look like when he returns from his injury? So I think there are more questions in terms of the wide receiver room and the running back room, especially when Georgia's is mostly transfers put together, uh, you know, outside of the guys that they are returning, outside of guys like Dylan Bell and Oscar Delp that I think will have big roles in this offense. London Humphreys, Kobe Young, you know, Michael Jackson III, how are they going to rotate in? You still got Dominic Lovett and Ra Ra Thomas. So I think Georgia's got plenty of weapons. I see the argument when you look at Ohio State, who's got the number one receiver in the country with Jeremiah Smith, and they have... Mecca Buka returning, right? It's obviously to look at that and, and look at their running back room and think that Ohio State's weapons are a little bit better. But the guy throwing to them is clearly not. Will Howard, a guy that played at Kansas State the last couple years, really good quarterback. He's not he's not as good as Carson Beck, right? Carson Beck is 
viewed as one of the best quarterbacks in college football. He's viewed as a guy who might be considered the best quarterback in college football this season. It seems that that argument kind of goes round and round between he and Quinn Ewers, uh, both guys that are potential top picks, right? These are guys that could go in the first round as, as uh, QBs that are chosen to lead a franchise in the NFL a year from now, right? Both of them had an opportunity to be drafted. They both would have been drafted in this current draft cycle. They they both return, and, and now Carson Beck, he seems like one of the best quarterbacks in college football. Well, to me, that matters a lot. It, it matters a lot that your quarterback is a little older in college, right? You want to win, your quarterback's a little older, your quarterback is started in a system for more than one year, and that will now be what Carson Beck is. Look at all the year two quarterbacks in systems that are really good. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time to gel and mesh, and for Carson Beck, he had to shake off a lot of rust, but obviously has seen a lot and learned a lot in the Georgia football program. But I think you have to lean heavily towards the quarterback position for Georgia, and that's the most important one. So on offense, we saw Georgia be able to plug and play weapons and Georgia's offense be able to look seamless, whether Lad McConkey or Brock Bowers was in there last year. So I feel good about Georgia's offense, especially pound for pound. To round out the offense, it's not even close that Georgia's offensive line is better. Even though you've got some returning guys for Ohio State, Georgia's returning four out of five guys. The only guy that they're losing on this offensive line is Amarius Mims. He'll go to the NFL. Guess how many games he started for Georgia in his three years at Georgia? Eight. Eight. Two of them being... Two or, two or three of them being in 2022, right? Uh, the National Championship and the, and the Peach Bowl. So he's obviously played and started in significant games, and he's played in a handful of them, but he's a guy that's going to be really good in the NFL. He's going to be really good in the NFL, but Georgia didn't need him last year. That, that was the whole point. Georgia, as my phone is starting to blow up, and I apologize, Georgia didn't, didn't need him last year. They had so much depth on the offensive line that that guys like that are almost just a luxury. So Marius Mims leaving, it doesn't concern me super uh, in a super big way because Georgia's offensive line was so deep. We saw how they played multiple guards. They played multiple people at tackle. Uh, replacing Cedric Van Pran will be difficult, uh, but the rest of the returning guys, you'll be able to return four players on that line that are starting. Defense is a little bit more... Uh, for grabs, I think Ohio State's going to have a really good secondary. Georgia's going to have to replace more of its secondary when you think about replacing three guys. And then at Ohio State, not only do they return some guys in the secondary, a secondary that, that looks like it's going to be really good, they added Caleb Downs, right, who an absolute beast in the transfer portal. Uh, he and Malachi Starks, in my opinion, are the two best safeties in college football. So I think that uh, there's a debate in the secondary room. Uh, especially when you don't know who Georgia starters are going to be at this point, because we really aren't sure, right? I lean towards Jonel Aguero at the star position at this moment heading into the spring. Obviously, the spring is going to help me determine a lot of that. I think it'll be Dalen Everett and Julian Humphrey at starting corners just because they'll want experience, but you can't rule out the young guys, especially when you have five stars like DeMello Jones and Ellis Robinson, the fourth coming in. They're going to compete for those starting jobs. At linebacker, I lean Georgia. At linebacker, I lean Georgia. Um, Smile Munden returning, I think, is huge for Georgia. Just another guy that's older, another guy that's seen a lot, another guy that's played in a national championship. Um, obviously, he has a chance to be a high draft pick, at least in the top three rounds in the future. And all of the young talent they have there, C.J. Allen will now be in year two. Raylan Wilson will now be in year two. They've got plenty of guys at that linebacker room where I feel they're the best. Defensive line, you can maybe look at Ohio State and uh, say... Well, you know, they've got, I can't pronounce his name, but they got the defensive end that's that's a high prospect, JT something, number 44. They got him. They're returning guys. Ohio State's defensive line should look really, really good. I agree. I, I agree. Ohio State should have a good defense. And Georgia, they're returning guys as well. Nazir Stackhouse, Warren Brinson, Michael Williams. So this this pound for pound, position by position argument that, that Greg McElroy has made for Ohio State, you can definitely break it down and show that Georgia Georgia's winning a lot of those battles, too. It's a little bit more split in half, and, and I think in some of the primary positions, you lean towards Georgia. So there's my breakdown of that argument. Make sure you're checking out our newsletter. That link is down below.